Lifting Up Jesus, Opening His Word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live in England via Skype with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, tragi tragedy yesterday in the United States in Parkland, Florida, uh, with the mass shooting of, of young people. Um, the first thing I thought was how could people go on without the true blessed hope, hope in Jesus Christ and his return? And... My second thought was when they interviewed these children, these young people, they seemed just so matter of fact. I remember seeing uh, one interview with a young person and they said, yeah, I looked out into the hallway and there was bodies and blood and nothing against that person. But it was just so matter of fact. It's almost like the youth have been dulled toward violence. Um, what's your comments on that? I woke up this morning to this terrible, tragic news here in the UK, bearing in mind I am five hours ahead of the East Coast, eight hours ahead of the West Coast, six hours ahead of Central Time, and seven hours ahead of, of, of Rocky Mountain Time, uh, and 10 hours ahead of Hawaii Time and so forth, Alaska. So I got this news with a time difference. and. I said, oh, no, not again. You begin thinking about it, first of all, in anger. Who did this? How could somebody do this? Then you think of your own kids going to school or your own grandkids going to school. What if they were one of the victims? And that makes me more angry. And, you know, I, I say that this guy, he should... Now, he lost his own mother and stuff like that. He had personal tragedy in his life. But does he have only two ways to deal with it? If he can be clinically proven, clinically proven beyond reasonable doubt that he was mentally irresponsible for what he did, he should be locked up for the rest of his life in an institution for the criminally insane with no prospect of ever getting out. And even if he got his marbles back, he should be confined to a penal institution for the rest of his natural life. No prospect of ever getting out. That is providing psychiatric diagnosis can be on reasonable doubt determined clinically that had he not been crazy, he wouldn't have done this. Had he not been mentally impaired, he would not have done this. But even if he's diagnosed as mentally ill, there is still a culpability unless he is so far gone that he's un not responsible for his actions. The guy had warning signs and all these things. A person like this, he should be given an evangelist or a pastor to speak to him and give him the gospel if convicted, and he's obviously guilty. He should have a chance to accept Jesus and repent for what he did and, and make an apology to the families that he's devastating, even though it's not going to bring their children back. That was my view. Unless he's so crazy, he's irresponsible. That was my first reaction. Then I began to say, well, obviously the left and the liberals are going to yell gun control and rail against the Second Amendment. I wish it was that simple. But it isn't. They're not living in the real world. 
attacking the Constitution is not going to solve the problem. Let me tell you something. I spent a lot of time in Northern Ireland during a generation of tit-for-tat murders every day and bombings, terrible things. Britain and Ireland having the strictest gun control, guns are basically outlawed for the most part. You can't get a gun unless you join a gun club or a shooting club or a hunting club, and then there's all kinds of restrictions. You got to keep the guns on the premises of the, of, of, of the club and so forth. People don't have guns in Britain. Even the police don't carry guns except for certain units. It never stopped the gun crime in Northern Ireland. Terrorists will always get guns. That terrible shooting at Sandy Hook in Connecticut at that school. That demon-possessed freak. Of all the U.S. states, the state with the strictest gun control was Connecticut, where it happened. You're not going to stop it with gun control. Louisiana, almost everybody has a gun, and there's far less gun crime. I lived for years in Israel. Everybody has a gun. Very little gun crime. There were terrorist attacks like this on schools in Israel until they began arming certain teachers with military training to protect the children and securing the buildings. Now, that doesn't happen in Israel anymore. We have to imitate their model. Switzerland the same. Everybody has a gun. Very little gun crime. Cities with left-wing Democrat governments, mayors like Chicago, the worst gun crime in the country. Anybody who thinks that gun control is going to stop this is stupid. The two worst countries in the world for gun crime, guns are illegal. Russia and South Africa. Guns are virtually illegal for most people. And they have the worst gun crime. Shootings like this have happened in countries like Norway and Germany. I was in Scotland the day it happened in a school in Scotland with some another demon-possessed madman, David, David Hamilton went into a school in a town called Dunblane and began shooting little kids. These are places where you have gun control, strict gun control. Criminals will always get guns. Depriving honest citizens of the rights to defend themselves is not going to stop crime. It'll increase it, if anything. That was my next thought. But these are reactions. Then I read some other news. The new budget for the next three years will push the federal deficit to $27 billion. The Congress is more responsible than the president. Mr. Trump has partial responsibility, but most of it is with Congress. Controlled by the Republicans, Mitch McConnell and Mr. Ryan. Now, of course, they were coerced by Schumer and Pelosi. Well, they wouldn't have gotten a budget. The military would have suffered. It was all corrupt. But it's business as usual in Washington, isn't it? Nothing's changing it. Columbine didn't change anything. Sandy Hook didn't change anything. Even electing a president who's more conservative than his predecessors has so far not stop business as usual in most respects. Not that I'm saying we shouldn't pray for the president. We should. And most of the blame is with Congress, not with him. And that includes the Republicans in Congress. It's the libertarian ones like Ron Paul who are telling the truth. You've got to protect the essentials like defense, homeland security, Medicare, Social Security. But these other things need to be slashed and slashed drastically. But they're not being. Twenty-seven billion. A generation 
two generations from now, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, if the world is still here, are going to be spending 50% of their tax dollars on servicing the interest on the debt we created for things that they don't benefit from. It's terrible. This is to say nothing of unfunded liabilities. At some point, there will be an economic cataclysm of apocalyptic proportions. How do I, as a believer, view these things? I'm reading from 2 Timothy chapter 3. A passage we should all know. It tells what the world and society will be like, but then it tells what the church is going to be like. Realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. Men will be lovers of self. God is not first. Others are not second. In a godly society, we love God. First and foremost, with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, and all our strength, because he loved us, giving his own son in our place. Secondly, we love others, especially beginning with our families, more than we love our own lives. Who's going to die? You or your grandson? Let the kid go. I will die. God forbid it should happen, but there's places it does. Difficult times will come. Men will be lovers of self, and look what follows it. Lovers of money, mammon worship, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving. Now that term unloving is a storga in Greek. Storga is family love. It's the highest form of love an unsaved person is capable of. An unsaved person cannot agape, cannot love unconditionally, except one place in the New Testament where somebody was so evil they unconditionally loved evil. Even unsaved people can understand loving your baby, loving your family, your parents, your children, your siblings. But it will be a storga. Family love will break down. Jesus talked about this. He said it will get into the church. Children will turn against their parents, parents against children. Irreconcilable. Now that's quite a turn. That doesn't mean you compromise with what's wrong for the sake of a false peace. But it does mean you're not belligerent, that you're not willing to Seek peace. Malicious gossips. We live in the era of fake news, don't we? Major newspapers, once respected magazines, Newsweek, New York Times. Undocumented sources. First, they begin to editorialize the news along the lines of their own biases instead of reporting it. And then they become so politically desperate in pursuing their agenda, they invent things. Invent them. Without self-control, no ikete, this gets into the church. We saw it in the Toronto deception, in the Pensacola deception, in the Lakeland deception, all defended by Michael Brown in Pensacola, and now we see it with Bill Johnson and Bethel. People doing things that are out of control. It goes on at the IHOP meetings of Mike Bickle. He even gets into the church. Now, if the church is like that, what do we expect from the world? Brutal. Haters of good. Look at Joy Bihar. If you talk to Jesus and he talks back to you, that's mental illness. Every time I pray, I talk to Jesus. Every time I read the word of God, he talks back to me by his spirit. And that's true for you. It's true for all of us. Just... You're pro-life. 
You don't want to abort a little baby? You don't believe in no-fault divorce? You don't believe in same-sex marriage? We have a magistrate, a magistrate in England, on trial. He did not want to give a child over to a same-sex couple. He thought a child belonged with the parents. No, they want to give it to a same-sex couple. He said he did not think this was in the interest of the child. He was reprimanded and forced to take rehabilitation courses to reorient his thinking about homosexuality and its acceptability and its impact on children to conform with their agenda. This is just wickedness. Look what it says. They're haters of good. Treacherous. Reckless. Conceited. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. That's John Piper to a T. Christian hedonism, which is pseudo-Christian. He said God's chief tenet is joy. Jesus is a full reflection of the Father. The fullness of the Father is reflected in him. The character of God is reflected in Jesus, who the scriptures tell us is a man of sorrows acquainted with grief because of sin, because of his creatures, most of them on their way to hell, because of the backslidden state of the church, and because of the rejection by Israel of her own Messiah. He's a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. He's sorrow and acquainted with grief because of the sin in my own life as a believer. Every time I drop my cross and live as an old creation instead of a new one, I cause his grief. Oh, there'll be a time for joy. But it's not now. And John Piper's teaching this. Holding to a form of godliness, but denying the power therein. Avoid men such as this. They have religiosity, but keep away from them. These religious narcissists who are cultic, teaching error, people like the Stephen Furtick, the neo. Calvinist, Tim Keller, heretics like Rob Bell, the Hillsong crowd, Carl Lynn and Co., the naked cowboy as Christian worship, holding to a form of godliness. They've got the form, but they don't have the power. If they had the power, The same-sex agenda would not be being taught to little kids in school. The powers of darkness would be pushed back. If they had the power, we would have an honest government. If they had the power, the church, much less the world, wouldn't be in the state it's in. But they don't have the power. They only have the form. Avoid men such as this. This tragedy that took place in Florida and Parkland, not far from where my mother used to live, actually, but it's terrible. Down in Broward County, not far from Fort Lauderdale and so forth. I'm really sorry, it's terrible. What can you say to those parents? All we can do is hope by the mercies of God that in his mercy he will use this tragedy because he's near to those who mourn to draw their families to salvation in Jesus, that it will cause them to believe the gospel and be born again. That's the only good that can come from such a terrible thing. It's this is wickedness. This is Satan. And the world is going to continue to get more like that. 
The only thing that can possibly stop it or even slow it down is that there's a revival, a real revival. But that revival is not going to happen when instead of the body of Christ being what the Word of God says it should be, we have the John Pipers and the Steve Furtick's. We have the Bill Johnsons. We have these people, you know, uh, in IHOP, Mike Bickle, holding the form of religion, but denying the power therein. May God comfort those families. May God show mercy to them. And may he use this tragedy to cause them to seek him. He's near to those who mourn. May people come to a saving knowledge of Jesus as a result of this terrible, terrible thing. And although it's difficult, I would even pray for their murderer. Yes, I think that unless he's so crazy, crazy to the point where it can be clinically proven, he wouldn't have done it if he wasn't crazy. Like, like David Berkowitz wouldn't have done it if he was not insane. Unless it's a case like that, I believe he should be executed. But I also believe he should be given the gospel and be willing to accept the consequences of his actions. May God have mercy. It's not going to get any better. Society will not get better. The government will not get better unless the church does. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you for listening. 